What's going on guys? Today we are going to be deriving these equations of motion using no calculus whatsoever. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started with the first one. To get into the first equation of motion, we're going to take a look at the first axiom of physics. Force equals mass times acceleration. Now if we zoom in on the acceleration term, we want to define what we mean by that. And what the acceleration is, is a change in velocity over a change in time. So before we go on, the convention is that delta t goes from 0 to t, so delta t is just equal to t. Delta x and delta v are going to go from some xi to some xf and some vi to some vf. So if we multiply both sides by delta t, we get that a delta t is equal to delta v. <coughs> now like I said, we're going to define delta t as just t and delta v as vf minus vi. So that gives adding the vi over will give us our first equation of motion. Now in order to derive the second equation of motion, we have to recall the definition of averages. Right, because this isn't calculus, we're not talking about instantaneous positions or velocities at some point in space. We're going to be talking about averages. And what I mean by that is if we were to make a graph of either position over time or velocity over time, the calculus perspective says that the slope of the tangent line also can represent either the instantaneous change in position or change in velocity, depending on what your y-axis is. Now, in non-calculus-based physics, because we're using deltas instead of differentials, what we're doing is we are comparing two points in space and taking the slope of the secant line, and that provides you with an average rather than an instantaneous. So let's define the definition of the average of something. So the average thing is equal to the sum of all of the things divided by the number of things. So for the second equation of motion, the thing that we're concerned about is velocity. We're going to make that substitution. So we can define our average velocity. I'm just going to call it V. I'm not going to call it V average for reasons that will be more apparent uh, later on. So V is going to be equal to, uh, when you look at that graph, so say this is velocity over time. Um, if we have two points that we're finding the average, the first one is going to be V initial, second one's going to be V final. So the two things that we're going to be talking about are V initial, V final. So it's going to be VI plus VF. There's two quantities that we're talking about, so the, the number of things is just two. And that's all we needed to do to define the average velocity. Now we also know that velocity is defined as the change in position over a change in time. Delta t is always just going to be t because t goes from 0 to t. So let's go ahead and cut out the middleman. Great. So one more thing that we need to do before we can get to the second equation of motion is redefine our vf. Right here, we define in our first equation of motion that Vf is Vi plus At. So we are going to substitute that into uh, this equation. Okay, so we have two uh, mutual terms up top. We're going to combine those together. And we get 2Vi plus At. Okay, so if we split up the fraction, the vi cancels with the 2, and we get an at over 2 here. So this becomes vi plus 1 half at is equal to delta x over t. And then all we have to do is distribute that t over, and we get our second equation of motion.
Cool, making progress. Now, in order to define the third and final equation of motion, we're going to have to pull from bits and pieces of things we derived previously. So we know that the uh, acceleration can be defined as a change in velocity over a change in time. And we also know that velocity is defined as a change in position over a change in time. Again, reminder that these are average quantities. We can solve for delta t on both sides. If we can solve for delta t and say delta t is equal to delta v over a, and then over here we're saying that delta t is, over, is equal to delta x over b, if we can make an argument that it's equal to two different things, then those two different things must actually be equal. So we're going to set them equal to each other. Okay, so now what we're going to do is do a little bit of cross multiplication. And we see that v delta v is equal to a delta x. If you recall, we defined the average velocity as vf plus vi over 2. We know delta V is just VF minus VI. And then nothing crazy with this part. We can go ahead and distribute that uh, 1 half over to the right hand side so that we don't have to deal with fractions. And this becomes VF plus VI. And then we just foiled both sides of this equation. The two middle terms cancel, because we got positive and negative. And we're left with vf squared minus vi squared is equal to 2a delta x. Adding this term to the right-hand side of the equation will give us the final equation of motion. And there you have the three equations of motion derived using nothing but algebra. Hope you guys found this one helpful, and I'll see you next time.